Hello and welcome to Dan Makes Things. My name is Dan and I made a companion robot. This is part four in a video series where I'm going to be talking you through the 3D printed files and how I printed this model using the Cura Slicer. The files are available in Tinkercad. The link will be available in the description and they're also available in the GitHub repo under the 3D Prints folder. As you can see, this is all of the parts needed to 3D print the robot and each one of them is stored in the model as a separate component. So you can see as you select each one, uh, they're highlighted in isolation. So working our way down from the top, you have the head, and the head comprises of a top part, the bottom part, the lid, and the visor. And underneath the lid, there is a gap, and the lid is deliberately raised up to allow for airflow to the Raspberry Pi. The visor is just cosmetic, oh, so you can remove that. The antenna fits within this ear component here, uh, and once that's printed, because it's printed as a rotating component, you can actually print this as one. So you would print the head and the antenna as one print. You need supports on here because this is printed upside down. Um, so on the, on the underside of the head, you can see the mounts of the Raspberry Pi. And if I remove this component and remove that, you can see the rest of the head component. And you can see the screw holes to allow us to screw through the top of the head into the bottom to fix it all together. This is the mount for the tilt switch, vents to allow airflow, the gap for the wires to connect the power and serial and then this space on the side is to allow the header pins to protrude slightly so that you can connect directly to them after it's assembled. Moving down you can see the neck components and as part of that we have the piece closest to the camera which deals with the extension of the head from its resting position to its alert position. And then these two are mounted to a pivot. So the servo is attached to this piece here and then screws go through into that component uh, to the other two, which allow it to tilt the head once it's extended. Again, there are screw holes to attach all of these arms to the servo mount and this servo mount then connects the servo to the head. Next we have the skeleton, and the skeleton is the centerpiece of the body that connects everything together. So the servos for the head are mounted in there, and the servos for the legs at the same time. Uh, so the front and the back are push fit, and they are just to allow us to have some coverings to cover the electronics. And as you see the skeleton more clearly there, uh, you can assemble the structure of the robot with just the skeleton and the legs and the neck mechanism. You don't actually need the front and back components at all. Uh, moving down, you can see that we have a couple of leg components. So in this instance, if you take this as an example around the back, you can see that you actually slot the servo into this part of the leg and then it protrudes into the lower part and then that's the same on both sides and you can fix the servo to this part by placing a screw in here and tightening this gap until it closes around the servo mount. The legs are modified from an existing STL model and uh, similar to the top leg you have a space for the servo in the back component and then it protrudes through and is fastened on the lower leg. In order to print this, I've been extracting these to STL files. So the STL files are available in the GitHub repository. As you can see here, you can add them as separate pieces to the slicing software. Uh, typically I print at low quality, around 0.28, uh, because it makes the process quite quick and at a low infill because there isn't generally very much need for it to be high infill. Most of the prints work without supports. In the case of the head, if you print it upside down, which is the best way to do it, uh, you'll see that the antenna 
actually prints above uh, the bed and then similarly there are quite a few overhangs so I have been setting it to print with supports but typically what I'll do is set the support to be just the areas touching the build plate and typically that does work quite nicely so these are the settings that I have been using once you have everything laid out on the bed you can send it to your 3D printer so that's everything if you do attempt to print this model, please let me know. I'd be interested to see how it turns out for you. Thanks for watching.